Let's go to Indiana because these pictures yeah. are just stunning. That's where we begin this morning. A huge fire emitting toxic smoke at a recycling plant in the town of Richmond. Watch this. Can you imagine standing there filming this like this person did? The flames prompting officials to issue evacuation orders for about 2,000 people there. Unknown plastics are burning at the plant, sending a giant pillar of black smoke all over Richmond. Officials are now waiting on air monitoring test results to help decide how long people are going to have to stay evacuated. Firefighters say when they responded to the scene, they discovered a semi-trailer engulfed in flames. It was fully loaded with uh, unknown type of plastics. Uh, the fire spread from the semi-trailer to other uh, piles of plastics that were around the trailer. Um, we only had one access into the to the, where the fire was. All the other access roads were blocked by piles of plastic and other semi-trailers. So the obvious question this morning is how did this start? Officials say they don't know and they won't know until that fire is extinguished. They say it could burn for days. Omar Jimenez is live on the scene. Omar, we can see you wearing a mask. I heard you at a news conference a short time ago. What are they telling you about the air quality right now? Yeah, John, for starters, when it comes to the air quality, the concern here is particulates from smoke matter at this point. Obviously, in the plume itself, they say that that is where the toxicity is. But as far as the ground level air, which, of course, is, is what people would be breathing, the smoke is the real issue. So that's part of why we're wearing this mask. I want to give you a glimpse of what this fire is looking at in the daylight. You can see the, the epicenter of sorts of, of where this fire has been burning from. This is where a lot of the fire crews have been placing some of their attention. Throughout the morning, they've been placing a lot of water here. They've now moved to a separate part of the area itself. But when we talk about what is actually burning, as we understand, at first it was a semi-trailer full of plastics that was on fire. Those flames eventually spread to some piles of plastic and then eventually this compound. The fire chief said in particular, this compound in total is about 14 acres worth of plastic inside and that about 13 and a half acres have burned so far at this point. We just got a briefing from a whole host of officials at the state level, local level and federal level as well, some representatives from the EPA. But take a listen to one of those uh, officials uh, as they explained a little bit of what they are dealing with here. Um, these are very fine particles, and if they're breathed in, can cause all kinds of respiratory problems, burning of the eyes, uh, tightening of the chest. It could uh, aggravate asthma, uh, it could cause bronchitis, and all kinds of things. So we are stressing to the public to honor the evacuation zone. It, it's for your safety that the evacuation zone is there. And if you can uh, see the smoke, you're in the smoke, get out of the smoke. And as of now, the evacuation zone is about a half mile radius from these flames. About 2,000 people in this 35,000 person town have been affected by those orders. And to be clear, one of the things that fire officials did say is that the fire, the good news is contained at this point to the recycling plant itself. The fire itself not spreading into the neighborhoods, but Omar, clearly the smoke and the air quality issues are. So just, you know, again, we see you there. I see the smoke behind you. What's it like to be there? Yeah, at this point, you know, there is a smell in the air. You, obviously, you can't go far without seeing this in particular. And we were talking to a resident who lives in that evacuation zone who literally got the order, did not hesitate and left. And even if she had not gotten the order, if she just looked outside, she would have seen that thick plume of black smoke. She was essentially right in it. Take a listen to some of what she told us earlier this morning. And when they said evacuate, I didn't have shoes on. I had socks on. And I left my purse, my shoes. I left a lot of things, personal things, you know, at the house and just got in the car and drove away. I'm still worried because they're telling us they don't know what was burning and that, you know, irritation may occur, uh, skin problems, you know. I'm, and my eyes were kind of like mad at and uh, I put warm cloths on that. I didn't go to the hospital, but it's available for us. 
And the mayor told us uh, that today the, the, the focus is on the residents, but also the first responders who are in there actually battling this blaze. But when you talk about what may have caused this, we still don't know what that is at this moment. But the mayor here was not mincing words and said that the building owner, the owner of this property is the one that is responsible for this because he says they've had issues with this property before, that they've been cited before, that there were fire hazards cited on this location and that this location had been given an order that they were unsafe. And to use some of the words of the fire chief, they did not wonder if something like this would happen, but when, and now it appears it has. So we're trying to find more details on that, but the mayor, the fire chief, did not hold back words when they pointed uh, the blame very quickly, even in these initial stages. And I should also mention as well, the fire chief said the most difficult part about getting to this was that a lot of the entrances were blocked with debris of plastic. So one of their initial problems was just trying to be able to get to the property to fight this flame that obviously you can see from miles away here, John. Omar Jimenez in Richmond, Indiana, with the smoke billowing behind you. Omar, you and your team, please stay safe. With us now is CNN Chief Medical Correspondent Dr. Sanjay Gupta. Sanjay, look, plastic's a funny word when it's in a film like The Graduate, but when you're talking about 14 acres of it burning, what are the risks it poses to air quality? Well, you know, there's the way of looking at this is you got to look at this in the immediate sort of time period, but also sort of over time, what happens to these these uh, particular compounds and over space, meaning that the obviously the evacuation zone is of concern. But we're talking about very, very fine particles which can travel over distance. So over time and space is when you have to sort of think about this. Omar was talking about the particulate matter in the evacuation zone. That's the smoke. That's the obvious stuff, John. Uh, you know, you, you see it, you smell it, um, you breathe it in. It's irritating. That's why people need to get out of there. Uh, masks can be helpful, but really, as Omar was saying, leaving that area so that you're not actually breathing in that particulate matter, which can affect even healthy people's lungs and hearts, uh, is, is the, the sort of most immediate concern. I think what Omar was sort of alluding to and what you heard in that presser as well is that when you burn this stuff, plastics turn into what are known as volatile organic compounds. That's sort of a potpourri of all sorts of different things, John. It becomes hard to sort of pinpoint exactly what that's all going to turn into. The, from previous fires and sort of looking at uh, these types of compounds, they know that it can turn into um, chemicals like styrene, benzene, and there's some evidence of, of what that can do if people are exposed. But what happens now, right now, John, is that those compounds, they're so light, um, so volatile, they get up higher, much higher in the plume that Omar was describing. And then over time, they will start to dissipate and come down to lower lying areas. How long that takes, where they land exactly, that's a little bit of an unknown. I mean, because you have to sort of anticipate and predict how that's going to unfold. But those, you know, those can be potentially problematic compounds if they are in high enough doses still at that point when they come down to the ground, causing things like dizziness and um, uh, disorientation, confusion, headaches, things like that, skin irritation. There's a lot more that's known about benzenes, for example, versus styrenes. But these are the sort of things they're going to be looking for, measuring the levels, but also seeing if there's any health impacts uh, you know, over the next several days. Who is most vulnerable here? Are we talking about people with respiratory issues or asthma? Who should be most careful? I, you know, really, I, there's been these studies that have looked at people who have underlying health conditions, such as cardiovascular disease, people are at risk of heart disease, things like that, babies. But really, you know, if you look at some of these studies, John, anybody is potentially vulnerable, um, healthy people. There were studies of healthy people who had been near, you know, big uh, sort of plumes of smoke like this. And certainly that particulate matter, just think of that as smoke breathing it in, uh, anyone is particularly vulnerable. When it comes to these volatile organic compounds, which again, may be high up in that plume of smoke, may travel, may come down over the next you know, several days, um, you know, people who are at risk of that, again, anybody could be at risk, but people who have underlying conditions, specifically cardiac and respiratory, they're gonna be probably be the most at risk.